Yo, what is up, guys? Will here with Canyon from Fantasy Basketball Flock. We're back from the All-Star break, and we are getting down into Fantasy Basketball Playoff Crunch Time. This video is going to be a pretty important one. We're going to be talking about looking ahead to the playoffs. This is the time you need to do that if you haven't already been doing this. Uh, to look at a couple different things. One is going to be the actual schedules for these playoffs. You know, obviously through the NBA, it you know it feels kind of like a luck factor of which teams have you know, extra games during a week. And obviously in the three week period of the fantasy basketball playoffs for most leagues, that's really, really important. So we're going to look at three of the most common sets of three week periods for fantasy playoffs and talk through games played, you know, our thoughts back to backs. So we're going to go through them. Uh, we're going to be utilizing a couple different sites. So I'm just going to put the links in the description. You guys can check these out. I recommend you taking a look at these for yourself. Hashtag basketball, basketball monster. We'll put the links to the actual fantasy basketball playoff schedules, really good resources to check out. But before we get into that, if you guys could drop a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already, we're trying to win you some fantasy basketball championships. We're doing that right now in this video. And then also, if you guys don't have an underdog account, use code Canyon, link in the description, 100% deposit match up to $100. If you use that code, check that out. We're going to be doing, you know, we got NBA props throughout the rest of the season uh, and a ton of different sports as well. And they've got promotions running all the time. But let's get into the video. First up here, we're going to be looking at the February 27th through March 19th playoff period. So obviously we're looking at multiple sets. This is the first set we're going to look at. Miami Heat are the only team that have 12 games. And then the Utah Jazz only have eight games. The rest of the teams have nine, 10, or 11. And Kane's going to talk through some of these back-to-backs. Yeah, so obviously you want to look at what team or what players on your roster have the most games in general, right? But another thing to look at is the back-to-back, specifically for certain teams. So looking at the schedule for the February 27th to the March 19th schedule, if that is your kind of playoff schedule, you're looking at the Bucks, the Thunder, the Sixers, all of 11 games, but they all have three back-to-backs. Same with the Heat. They do have 12 games, but they have three back-to-backs. And this is important because of those uh, players that typically will rest, right? So you're looking at the Heat. The Heat love to rest in players. They love their games time decisions jimmy butler kyle lowry even bam they're role players they love to rest those players so yes they have 12 games but be aware they have three back-to-backs so you know jimmy butler might only play 9 10 11 of those games kyle lowry might only play you know 8 9 10 of those games etc so make sure to look at back-to-backs not just how many games are in that schedule uh, another couple teams the bucks with Giannis's recent injury if you're watching the all-star competition he obviously sat out most that all-star game because of the uh, wrist or thumb or whatever the hand injury was. Thunder, you're looking at Shea. You know, you got the Sixers with three back-to-backs. Definitely, you're looking at Embiid. Uh, specifically, teams that are more or less solidified in a playoff spot. They don't have to risk uh, using all their stars for every single one of these games. And then even down at the bottom, you know, you got like the Clippers. You know, they only have nine games, but they still have two back-to-backs. And we all know how the season has gone for Kawhi Leonard so far. So he's definitely a person to look out for for back-to-backs. So not only does Kawhi only have nine games in this playoff schedule for your fantasy team, he's got two back-to-backs. So there's a very good chance that he can rest depending on where they're at in the playoff standings come this time. So uh, definitely maybe the more important thing other than the total games for these teams and your players on your roster is these back-to-backs and other teams to shout out is the Lakers with LeBron, with Anthony Davis, with these kind of stars that are, you know, notably injured or rested or load managed. Uh, the Lakers have two back-to-backs in their 11 games as well. So yes, it's important to look and see, you know, yes, I have Jimmy Butler. He's got 12 games during my playoff schedule. I'm looking really good. They have three back-to-backs. You know, you're not possibly looking as good as you might think. So, you know, take into account these total games, but factor in the likelihood of these players being rested for load management, their standings as their team is in the playoffs. You know, all these things are factors. It's not as easy as just looking at the amount of games that these teams have to play in your playoff schedule. Definitely. And then that's a really good call. I mean, obviously all these three different sets of fantasy playoff schedules aren't leading into, you know, the final week of the NBA season. If your playoff settings do have that set up, that should be changed moving forward. That that should not be for obvious reasons, just with all the shenanigans with, you know, players sitting towards towards the actual end of the NBA regular season. But yeah, really good points Canyon brought up. I mean, when you're looking at these back to backs, the big thing is to, you know, really consider, you know, is that twelve games played actually going to be twelve? 
or because there's three back-to-back that can look more like eight or nine. And obviously, we don't want to project or predict injuries, but you know, these stuff, this stuff happens all the time, right? Players are dealing with some kind of nagging injury or something popped up again in their questionable game time decision. For a lot of back-to-backs, it's just automatic. They're out one of those nights. So definitely something to consider. Uh, and just in trades overall, you know, we're going to talk through the other three sets. Uh, I just want to mention. I, watching this video, this is really important information, but one thing you don't want to do is immediately look at this information and have it drastically change the moves you're going to make. I do think it's really smart to try to make trades to add some value or games, but I don't think you should massively tear down and you know, you're know you going from you know top three round talent to, well, I moved down to the you know fourth, fifth, sixth round guy, but he has he's going to play two more games because we don't even know if that's true. So you know, really losing value on that kind of move and in all reality if you're going down so far in value to add games a lot of the times the production they give you in one or two less games equals out anyway so moving down for that is just not worth it next set here we're going to be looking at march 6th through march 26th another three week fantasy playoff uh, series we've got uh, no teams with 12 games so hawks nets warriors rockets grizzlies thunder sixers kings and wizards all have 11 and then the clippers are the team with eight games. Yeah, and this, uh, obviously there's a little bit of overlap, right? We're going from March 6th to 26th based on most people's playoff schedules. The previous set that we looked at went until March 19th. There's a little bit of overlap here, so the top teams are going to be a little close uh, as as far as the last set that we mentioned. But Sixers, again, 11 11 games, three back-to-back. So Embiid's definitely someone to look out for. Maybe Harden as well. uh, And some role players there if you got Max here. Or so on and so forth. Wizards, three back-to-backs now in this set with a guy like Bradley Beal who's been dealing with injuries. Uh, Porzingis, Kuzma, they've all had their time with injuries. The Hawks as well are a new team up here uh, with some potential injuries with, you know, Trey Young, John Collins, even some of those fringe players as well. But, I mean, the Clippers down to eight. It's not looking great, right? You know, the last set, they had nine games, but two back-to-backs. Now they've got eight games. So Clippers players, especially if you got Kawhi, it's looking a little grim. So, you know, we'll talk about the proper way to evaluate the value there and, and trade off if you need to there. But uh, playoff scheduling so far, Clippers is not looking as great. But again, the top teams, even though they have a lot of games, that probably means they have more back-to-backs. So Sixers are definitely another team to look out for with beat again. Um, having a lot of those back-to-backs, Thunder again with Shea or Giddy or any of those players. Uh, the Kings also now introduced with three back-to-backs, although they have been a bit more healthy. A guy like Fox has had some injury troubles in the past, but um, these are some teams in, to look out for as far as back-to-backs. And again, like Will said, we're not obviously projecting or hoping or you know trying to correctly predict any sort of injury. Just something to definitely look out for, again, rather than just looking at Boom, total games in my playoff schedule, 11, love it, lock it in, you know, slow down, be a bit more analytical than that. You've got these back-to-backs, you've got certain trade values you can do. Uh, there's a lot more to look in for uh, for these sets here. Definitely. And too, you know, before we get into this kind of last set here, the March 13th through April 2nd set, I do think it's just kind of important overall to understand this, right? Not even necessarily from a, you're going to make some drastic trades, but just having the awareness of what it's going to look like for each of these sets come playoff time, it's important to know if you want to make some sort of moves or trades, or you want to move some of these Clipper guys to stay in the same kind of tier of player and, you know, add some value from a games played perspective, but also streaming. Streaming is going to be something that's super, super important. So I kind of want to call that out that, you know, when you're looking at your roster and what games you're going to have, a number of games played you're going to have for your top players, it's really important to kind of understand what that's going to look like potentially with some of these back-to-backs as well. Next and final set here, we have March 13th through April 2nd, and we've got three teams that are going to play 12 games, the Rockets, the Grizzlies, and the Kings, and then we have four teams that only have nine games they're going to be playing, the Hornets, the Cavs, the Heat, and the Knicks. Yeah, this is one of those first sets that the Rockets, you know, a team that's definitely not going to be in the playoff picture is kind of popping up at the top of the set in this, you know, March 13th, April 2 set if you have those playoffs there. It's interesting because they have a lot of 
young guys, right? So this is the kind of the opposite we've been talking about. It's not like a team that might be resting per se, but it's a team that has a lot of young guys and likes to run a lot of different rotations. So, you know, is this a team that you look to stream a lot, like Atari Eason, or are they playing Sangun and Green? And is Green putting up 30 shots a game still? Um, so the Rockets definitely an interesting team here in the set with four games every week. Uh, Kings, again, three back-to-backs. They'll be vying for playoffs, uh, especially seeding. Another thing to look at, home court advantage. I know they're in the mix there in the middle of the West. Uh, they've been bouncing around three through five. And then the Bucks again, three back-to-backs. The Bucks might be solidified as a home court advantage team come the end of the season. So a guy like Giannis, who's got that lingering injury right now, definitely, again, might pop up as one of those guys that could definitely rest one of those back-to-back games. And then near the bottom, specifically the Hornets, the Knicks, two teams that probably won't be vying for anything crazy playoff wise um another more teams to look out for with injuries you know around someone like Lamelo, or they, they want to play mark williams even more than they are um so again there's just m- much more than just the total there's narrative there's playoff schedule there's injuries uh, there's back-to-backs there's so many things to look for and so there's a lot of ways that you can take advantage of streaming of trade value that we'll talk about here yeah, definitely. I think an important thing to, you know, kind of talk about, you know, obviously I mentioned it earlier, but but for trades that you're looking for, I think understanding what the playoff picture is going to look like using these resources we've talked about in this schedule and looking at back to backs, you can add a lot of value for getting a game or two potentially from a guy that's in a similar tier. Now, I do want to caution, like I mentioned earlier about really, you know, letting these schedules play into your trade decision making too much and you're actually losing a ton of value to do that i know obviously a lot of people can fall into the trap of i'm a lock to make the playoffs i'm just gonna get ready and set my playoff lineup i'm gonna get every single guy on my team is gonna have 11 games that's great but if you're doing something like that a lot of the times you're gonna be losing a ton of value and at that point you know it's the nba right you know if you you try to make all these moves to get guys are gonna play 11 games you know it's very likely that some of those guys are just going to play eight or nine, you know, especially with some of these teams with back to backs. So a lot of those things, I think it's just more important to understand than necessarily make it drastically affect your decision making. But alongside understanding, uh, you know, something we didn't necessarily go into in too in depth, but looking at, you know, quality games from the bottom of your roster. When we talk about quality games, we're talking about days during the week that, um, you know, obviously there's certain days during the week that have more more games played across the NBA. So finding players from teams that you can stream on those days that are lighter uh, can be really, really helpful. And I think utilizing these resources and, you know, whatever resources are available to you on your specific site or app you play on, some of them do offer schedules, is something that can really, really help you come playoff time and getting that properly and done. And like we mentioned, the links to both the resources we talked about basketball monster and hashtag basketball will have the links to the playoff scheduling in the description if you want to check that out appreciate you guys watching. See you in the next one.